Dr. W.F. Kumuyi. Thank you, Pastor. Praise the Lord. And the pastor has said, there is a miracle with your name attached unto it. Salvation for you. Healing for you. Deliverance for you. It will not fail in your life in Jesus' name. It's your life. It's your redeemer. It's your power. It's everything. In everything. It will do great in your life tonight. In Jesus' name. Once again, I welcome you to the crusade. GCK. Jesus, the miracle worker. Shout it with me. We've been using that word miracle. M is the mercy of God, the miracle of mercy. Salvation comes by mercy. Healing comes with his mercy. And deliverance with his mercy. I is that impartial intercessor. It's in heaven right now. And he's praying for you, making intercession for every individual. Our, that's a reigning redeemer. He reigns in our lives. He reigns in our heart. He reigns in our home. When we allow him, he reigns over every circumstance in your life. And I know already your life is turning around for the better. He is the one that has that authority. He is always able. And because of that authority and ability, he comes into our lives and he does the incredible. Tonight, incredible, impossible things are going to be possible in your life in Jesus' name. I come now to the letter that's the letter tell me C. I said that the letter C. C and it is Jesus the compassionate Christ with complete cure by your head we we'll pray father in the mighty name of Jesus I pray that today your compassion your cure your power will be manifested on everyone in Jesus name that Lord you will do the great thing the gracious thing the mighty thing and bring cure to every part of every life tonight in Jesus name Effect it and perform it in every life. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. God has blessed you already. Sit down in the blessing of the Lord. Jesus, the compassionate Christ with complete cure. We're looking at Luke chapter 7. And we're looking at verse 20. In Luke chapter 7, verse 20. When the men were come unto him, they said, John Baptist, John the Baptizer, John the Baptizer has sent us unto thee, saying, Art thou he that shall come, come to save, come to heal? Come to deliver, come to set free, come to bring the glory of heaven to the earth. Are you the one that shall come or do we look for another? Look at verse 21. In verse 21, and in that same hour, like in this same hour, today your miracle will reach you there. Your conversion will reach you there. Your salvation, forgiveness, freedom, and total transformation will reach you there in Jesus' name. In that same hour, he cured, he cured, he cured many of their infirmities and plagues and of evil spirits. 
and unto many that were blind he gave us sight and you know it's still the same Jesus Christ the same yesterday today and forever what he did at that time is going to do at this very hour it will open your blind eyes it will loose your dumb tongues it will open your your deaf ears in jesus name you are paralyzed you rise up and walk tonight and you have that bad pain that will not allow you to bend or to stand or to move in any way today your miracle your cure is coming in jesus name he cured many of their infirmities and their plagues and of evil spirits and unto many he gave their sight verse 22 it tells us then jesus and sonny said unto them go your way and tell john and tell everyone you tell your neighbor you tell your friend and you tell everyone around you online tell the people that you have that contact with tell them how the blind see the lame walk the lepers are cleansed the deaf hear the dead are raised and the poor have the gospel preached unto them verse 23 it says and blessed is he and blessed is she and blessed is the man in any generation in every generation blessed is that one whosoever shall not be offended in me the cure that he brings the complete cure that he brings he kills the head he kills the mind he kills the soul he heals the spirit he heals the body he heals the mind he heals the personality he heals every part of our soul spirit and body is healing is deliverance is for everyone is coming there to you today look at his completeness colossians chapter 2 and i'm reading here in verse 8 beware lest any man spoil you you know some men can spoil you with their jesting with their ridicule with their misinterpretation of the bible with their misrepresentation of the complete Christ they can spoil you they can derail you and they can defile you defile your mind and defile your spirit because of their ideology and philosophy and they begin to argue don't listen to the argument beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men after the rudiments of the world and not after christ look at verse 9 in verse 9 for in him when you come into him in him when you see what's available through him in him dwelleth all the fullness of the godhead bodily then in verse 10 in verse 10 and ye are complete tonight you are complete if the blindness makes you incomplete it will open those eyes and tonight you are complete if the suffering the sickness makes your happiness incomplete tonight it will take the suffering and the sickness away and tonight you are complete amen if all the deformity 
you know, you can't use your leg. The legs are there, you can't use them. The arms are there, you can't use them. The tongue is there, you can't use it. The eyes are there, you can't use it. And the mind, the heart is there. And because of the heart problem, you can't, your heart is not functioning well. That's incompleteness. But tonight, I am complete. Tonight, I am complete. If you are impotent, that means you are not complete. But now, power coming from on high. Power coming upon your life. That incompleteness in your life will be taken away. Tonight, ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. That's what we bring today, Jesus. The compassionate Christ with complete kill. One, two, three. I'm looking at three things today and you will get there. Tonight is the night of your kill. Give me a good amen. Tonight is the night of your conversion. Give me a good amen. And everything, listen, everything that is lacking in your life will be supplied tonight in Jesus name three things number one repentance that leads to the confession of Christ repentance that leads to the confession of Christ number two reliance relying on him resting on him leaning on him being supported by him in your soul in your spirit in your heart reliance that leads for conversion on christ for salvation on christ for reformation in christ for regeneration in christ reliance that's faith when you rely on someone you believe him you rest on him you lean on him you take him for your support that faith that belief that reliance on him brings conversion total conversion in every area of your life number two reliance that leads for conversion on christ number three reassurance assurance is coming to you I said assurance is coming to you. Reassurance that looks up to the compassion of Christ. Look at number one. Number one, we're looking at repentance that leads to confession, the confession of Christ. Look at Proverbs chapter 28, reading from verse 13. He that covereth his sins shall not prosper, but whoso confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy. I need an amen there. Yeah. He that covereth his sins shall not prosper. That's the word of God. There are people, how do they cover their sins? They say, see me, look at my hand. This is how my heart is. I don't do any evil. I don't hate anybody. I don't say the person that has breakfast should not eat it. Look, this is how my heart is. And they cover their sin. The people that said, I've never done anything wrong. Have you caught me ever doing anything wrong? They cover their sin. The people that tell a lie, and before you know it, they cover it with a bigger lie, a wider lie. The people that go to do evil, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and then on Sunday, they come to church like angels of God. And when you mention the name of Jesus, they kneel down. You mention the name of Jesus, they bow down. They are gentle in church, they are lions outside, in their hearts. 
in their plan in their action in their evil deeds nobody as terrible as they are in the society but they say what have i done what do i do but i saw you slapping that man ah uh, you don't understand i was defending myself i was protecting myself you go to take charm to hurt other people you don't understand i was only protecting myself only defending myself they color what they do and they put a good color on their bad life and they are covering their sin and god knows everything Adam, where are you? I heard your voice in the garden. And I had to hide myself. What? What have you done? It's not me. Ask my wife. Ask Eve. It's other people that do it. And then I come into the picture. They cover their sin. A can. He stole that thing and he went to his uh, apartment, dug the earth, buried that thing there, and covered it up. They cover their sin. And when they said, when God said, there is evil in the camp, and because of that, I will not go with you anymore, it can did not come out, it was undercover and they began to bring all the tribes of Israel he was undercover he didn't believe in God he didn't believe that the God who knows everything knows every secret will get to him and point him out thou art the man thou art the woman they cover their sin do you cover your sin are you putting on a smile as if you are a nice, nice fellow, a gentle fellow, after you have done that evil, then you cover it up and you look like a nice, gentle man, a nice lady. Now, such people, God will bring judgment upon them because they are accusing God of being blind. God will bring judgment upon them because they are taking the knowledgeable God as a God that does not know them or see them. They make God a blind God that cannot see. He that covereth a sin shall not prosper. But the person that says it's a lost game. I can't do it. I can't cover up. I have to open up. He knows everything. Everything done in secret. He knows everything done behind the door. He knows everything done without the view and the sight of men. He knows all the receipts will change. All the money was steal from the office. All the lies were tell in the market. And we say, you know, I'm just saying to you, I'm just selling to you. I make no gain. You know it's a lie. We know it's a lie. All those things, if you open up, but whoso confesses and forsaketh, you see that it's not only to confess, there are people they come, Lord, I confess I'm a sinner. But you said that yesterday, but you said that last Sunday, but you said that last time. It's not only to confess, it is that you forsake whoso confesses and forsaketh them shall have mercy tonight mercy is waiting for you let me hear your amen when you confess and when you forsake you forsake now if you stole my shirt you sinned and then you're wearing that shirt 
And I was looking at you and I was saying, that's my shirt. Look at this man. He stole my shirt. And eventually, you come to crusade. And you say, Lord, I'm a thief. I know. I cannot hide it from you. You know me through and through. And uh, so, you confess to God. But you didn't forsake my shirt that you stole. You didn't bring it back to me. You kept on wearing the stolen shirt. And then you come to me and you say, Can you have Jesus as your personal savior? I say, Tell me the story. You know, I got Jesus as my savior. I am saved. I said, How are you saved? And you are wearing my shirt. And you say, I confess my sin to the Lord. They told us to raise up our hands. I raised up my hand. I am saved. And I want you also to be saved. I said, okay, before I listen to you, I want to ask you a question. The shirt you are wearing, do you know who it belongs to? You say, well, I think, okay, are you the owner? Yes, I am the owner. And you see, wearing the stolen shirt, I confess, you must forsake. Number one, you return the shirt to me with a humble heart. I was a thief. I have confessed unto the Lord. And I come to you to confess to you and to return your stolen shirt unto you. That is what brings salvation not only that you forsake stealing you don't steal from me anymore and you don't steal from others anymore that is the word of god whatever name you call it call it restoration okay you are restoring what you had stolen Call it restitution. Okay, you are restoring what you had stolen. And it's not only church, money, not only money, you might even steal a woman. And there you have, you are just adding women to women. And you're not even, you no know, dowry, nothing. I love you, I like you. And then you take them and you bring them home. Whatever you have taken unlawfully. He that confesses and forsaketh his sin shall have mercy. I pray the mercy of God will come to you tonight. Look at First John chapter 1. And I'm reading from verse 9. First John chapter 1 verse 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins the sin we confess is the sin he forgives if the sin is the sin he cleanses it takes away from our lives is the sin the sin that you conquer any unconfessed sin will not be conquered in your life you have sinned you cover it up you are not confessing to God. You are not confessing to the person you have offended. You are covering, 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 giving excuses and lame excuses. All those sins you don't confess, you can never conquer. It's when you confess to God, he gives the forgiveness and he gives the power to live an overcoming life if we confess our sins. He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Today it will happen. To you it will happen. When you raise up your hand and you confess to God, I am a sinner. I don't want to be a sinner anymore. I want the Savior to come unto me and forgive me and cleanse me. Then he comes, he's a loving Savior. He forgives you. 
it sets you free and because you confess because you forsook it makes you to conquer the sin you have confessed and forsaken any sin you don't confess you don't forsake you will never be able to conquer that sin but the lord has called us today he will give you the conquering power Amen. conquering power you will conquer you'll be cleansed everything you've done before when you confess and forsake you have the mercy of god in jesus name i say amen, amen. look at romans chapter 10 verse 9 in romans chapter 10 verse 9 but that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the lord now we have confessed the sin then we confess the savior we open our mouth and we say it's my savior he is my lord if we he says if thou shalt confess with your mouth the lord jesus and shall believe in thine heart that god has raised him from the dead thou shalt be saved you will be saved what's the person saying amen i said where are you salvation comes to you tonight conversion comes to you tonight a new life comes to you tonight in jesus name it says if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the lord jesus that's jesus as your lord and shall believe in thine heart that god has raised him from the dead thou shalt be saved in verse 10 verse 10 says for with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation we come to number two here number two is reliance that leans for conversion on Christ we rely not on ourselves we have realized we cannot save ourselves we have realized we cannot turn over a new leaf as they say we realize our resolution our determination cannot set us free from sin we've tried it over and over at the end of every year we make resolution and january we go back to the same old sinful defiling thing personal reliance on ourselves will never change our lives but reliance on christ christ as savior Christ as Lord. Christ as the one that changes a very nature. Reliance that leads for conversion on Christ. And tonight, as you lean on him, as you trust him, as you rely on him, there will be conversion transformation in your life tonight in jesus name matthew chapter 18 verse 3 matthew chapter 18 verse 3 and said verily i say unto you except ye be converted and become as little children ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven now when people read verses of scripture they pull that verse out of its context and the lord was talking to his disciples that left the net that left their jobs they've even gone out praying for the sick healing the sick but there was still this pride of the depraved man in their heart and now they are forgotten they were following christ and they became so proud wondering who will be the greatest 
who will be the highest, who will be the most respected, who will be number one. They were now seeking position, recognition. And Jesus said unto them, disciples, unto them, the people that profess were going to heaven, were children of God, except ye be converted and become as little children and children don't know i'm number one i'm number ten they don't know about that they're simple hearted they're humble they're meek they're lowly they don't use their talent to fight for position they don't use their achievement to fight for position they don't use their opportunity to fight for position that pride disqualifies you from being a follower of Jesus who said, I am meek and lowly. Take my yoke upon you and your soul will find rest. He wants us to be truly and thoroughly converted and to be conscious of that conversion all the time because except ye be converted and become as little children ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven look at acts chapter 3 we're reading from verse 19 acts chapter 3 reading from verse 19 repent ye therefore and be converted you see that repentance is not in isolation repent ye therefore and be converted when we truly repent we turn away from our sin we turn away from the darkness in our lives we turn away from the hidden practices in our lives if you stay behind the cost the uh, the cutting my wife cannot see who i touch what i touch where i go and what i commit and i can be coming back from the office and branch over there and my wife will never tell who i am visiting now behind the curtain you show you're still a sinner you're still an adulterer you're still a fornication as long as wife will not see as why as long as husband cannot see you just go ahead and i ask you will you do that thing if your wife was by your side will you go to that place if your husband were by your side anything with you behind the curtain behind the door and we think because our neighbor will not see because we think a friend cannot see our pastor can never see this one he will never detect that that's where i'm going and that's what i've been doing that thing shows that you have not really repented when we repent Every day, in the daylight, in the night, everything shows that we're being converted. A change, a transformation has happened. It says, repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out. If we don't repent, our sin will not be blotted out. The sin will be following us like our shadow. And until we get to the throne before the throne of judgment, look at that shadow there, it's still following. It's the repentance that makes him to blot out all our sins when the times of refreshing renewal when the times of regeneration and the time of transformation shall come from the presence of the lord what the lord is saying is don't hide it's of no use don't do anything in secret that you don't want to see the light of day come to the lord present yourself before the lord and say lord this is my real self i've been a pretender i've been an actor i've been a hypocrite 
I've been a sinner all along, but now I come, I turn, I repent, and now the hand of the Lord and the power of the Lord will work out that conversion. It says, and your sins shall be blotted out. All the sins will commit small, great, all the sins were committed of little size of big size all the sins were committed anytime every time occasionally or habitually goes on record in the book of records before the lord and it is when we truly repent and he knows our heart that we have repented that it will blot out all that he has written concerning us in our lifestyle of sinning it will blot out everything it will not be remembered against us anymore and then we go out free and we do the will and the word of god tonight is your night tonight is my night Okay, repent ye therefore now and be converted that your sins may be blotted out when the time of refreshing, of renewal, the time of regeneration, and the time of reformation shall come from the presence of the Lord. In verse 26, verse 26, unto you falls God having raised up his son jesus sent him to bless you in turning away in turning away every one of you from his iniquity christ came to save from sin it doesn't give us license to go on sinning it doesn't give us freedom to go on sinning it doesn't give us the go ahead to keep on sinning he came so that he will take us from sin and he will take sin from us and he will turn us away turn everyone away from his iniquity tonight is the night he will do it. I said he will do it. For who? For who? Be it confirmed in your life in Jesus' name. We're coming to point number three now. Number three is the assurance. The assurance that looks up to the compassion of Christ. Compassion of Christ. Compassion of Christ. What does Christ do when he has compassion on us? Remember, Jesus is our healer. And when we're suffering and we're pain, we can't concentrate on anything. We're rolling here and there. And he sees, and he sees you. And you look up to him and you say, Lord, I am suffering. His compassion will come to you. He will heal you. Compassionate healing today. Compassionate deliverance today. And compassionate cure in your life today in Jesus' name. Matthew chapter 14. I'm reading from verse 13. Matthew chapter 14. We're reading from verse 13. When Jesus heard of it, he departed thence by sheep into a desert place apart. And when the people heard thereof, they followed him on foot out of cities. The people heard of Jesus. They've been suffering. They've been sick. Many of them paralyzed. Many of them blind. 
Many of them having deaf and dumb children. Many of them, some of them having issue of blood. Some of them having fibroid. Some of them having incurable diseases. And they heard, and from different cities, from different cities, they came unto him. Look at verse 14. In verse 14, and Jesus went forth and saw a great multitude and he was moved with compassion toward them and he healed their sick amen. amen that's jesus christ anytime he sees a sick person a sick family a sick community a sick people gather together on the crusade field online over the radio over the television he has seen you there paralyzed man he has seen you there the woman having stroke hand cannot be raised up and the foot cannot walk he has seen you there and the one that is suffering from demonic attack affliction oppression he has seen you there tonight he saw them and he was moved with compassion towards them and not not empty compassion active compassion and he healed their sin as he changed as he changed is there something he cannot do remember he has complete power he has complete authority. He has complete ability. As he healed their sick, is healing our sick people here tonight in Jesus' name. The mention of his name will bring the healing and the deliverance, and it will set you free. It will set me free. He, Christ the healer, will set me free i will not carry i will not take my sickness home today it will have compassion on me it'll have compassion on you see me yeah. and it will heal you tonight in jesus name matthew chapter 20 i'm reading from verse 32 matthew chapter 20 and we read from verse 32 and jesus stood still and called them and said what will ye that i shall do unto you you must answer the question he says yes i know you are there are you looking for healing or are you looking just to see my face are you looking for healing or you just you just want to say i was there I attended that crusade and you know I heard all those songs and all those messages and I heard all those testimonies is that why you came no you don't want to be a spectator I am going to be a partaker of the miracle power of God in Jesus name it says and Jesus stood still and he called them and said watch will ye that i should do unto you now before i continue answer that question look at your left self look at your body look at the pain look at the sickness look at the infirmity look at the impossibility and answer the question what will ye that i shall do unto you have you answered him I said, have you answered him? If you have answered him, that solution will come tonight in Jesus. And look at verse 31. Verse 31, they say unto him, Lord, they accepted him as their Lord. They believed him as their lord and they opened their mouth and they called him lord that's what you should do you should understand that you can't have self-management and get everything you need in life making yourself the lord of your own life the controller of your own life you cannot have all the favor of heaven all the blessing of heaven 
all the healing flowing from him if you make yourself the lord the final authority and the final a uh, person controller of your life you must accept him you must take him lord if you make uh, you know one uh, man old man down there if you make him the controller of your life and the giver of everything you need and everything you want and say that man or that madame is the controller is the manager of my life any problem i have he is the one to solve it then jesus is out of your equation and the lordship of christ will not be effective in your life if you make wood stone iron idol you make that the lord of your life you cannot have what you want and dream of you are going to have but when you say jesus the savior jesus the healer Jesus the deliverer is the Lord of my life and today I come to him I surrender myself to him without any rival without any limitation without any any restriction Christ will be the Lord of my life when you call him Lord when you make him Lord and when you submit to the Lordship of Christ favor will come upon your life the goodness of god will be activated for your life in jesus name they say unto him lord that our eyes may be opened that our sickness may be healed that our infirmity may be taken away uh, look at the next verse there in verse 34 so jesus Add compassion on them. That's the compassion of Christ. It's activated by our surrender unto Him. That's the compassion of the Lord. It's activated by our faith in Him. That's the compassion of the Lord. It's activated by totally relying upon Him. And we express the reassurance that we know He can heal us and He will heal us he will heal you he'll give you salvation that's the first thing that's the one that takes us to heaven he'll give you salvation that the one that brings us into the family of god he'll give you salvation that's the thing that brings righteousness in our lives first of all we make him lord and he gives us forgiveness freedom he gives us deliverance from our sin and he gives us salvation that makes our name to be written in the book of life in heaven we call him lord and now what do you want compassion what do you want you want kill what do you want you want healing what do you want you want deliverance from everything that has bound you it's coming and it will come to your life today in jesus name and he touched their eyes he touched their eyes it will touch when you place your hand there where you have the challenge a sign will come the supernatural hand will come that great power irresistible by satan by sickness that almighty healing hand delivering hand redemptive hand will come over your hand and the healing will come and the deliverance will come he touched their eyes it will touch that fiber it will touch that paralysis it will touch that stroke it will touch that deafness it will touch that incurable disease in your life tonight in jesus name and he touched their eyes and immediately your miracle is coming now immediately 
instantaneously uh, by the way that's how salvation comes salvation does not come gradually of smoking 10 cigarettes every day but now i went to the crusade i'm smoking eight i'm smoking seven and gradually 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 the cigarettes are decreasing no immediately instantaneously he'll brush off and he will kick off that terrible sickness habit in your life in jesus name you know i used to i have a wife and then i used to go to one two three four and now i came to the crusade and out of those four concubines uh, I've subtracted one. I've subtracted two. Now I only go to two. Uh, uh, that's no salvation. No self-management. When it comes to you, when it touches your heart, when it turns your life around, every evil woman, every sinning woman, every adulterous woman, every fornicating habit, it'll wipe out of your life instantaneously in Jesus name. And the same thing with a healing. You come to the Lord and you say, Lord, I want healing. I want deliverance. I want to be totally set free. It says, and immediately their eyes received sight. And they followed him. And they followed him. You see, after they got their sight, their miracle, they didn't go back to idol after they got their sight their miracle they didn't go back to you know they go to celebrate their miracle with fine wine drinking no they followed him after he has saved you after he has healed you if you are really healed and you are grateful to the Lord the spirit of the Lord will quicken you and then you follow you follow you follow Christ you follow Christ in your life you follow Christ in worship you follow Christ by a life that is totally changed and totally transformed that attitude that reassurance that power will come to your life tonight in Jesus name look at Mark chapter 9 I'm reading from verse 21 Mark chapter 9 verse 21 and he asked his father how long is it ago since this came unto him and he said of a child that child that son of that father had been suffering for a long time from childhood whatever sickness you had from childhood tonight the solution has come tonight the healing has come power will come from on high and roll that long-standing mountain of a problem of sickness roll it away from your life in jesus name the sage of each other verse 22 in verse 22 and of times it has cast him into the fire that's the evil spirit the dumb spirit the evil power tormenting the child's life throw him into the fire and into the waters to drown him to burn him up to destroy him if but if thou canst do anything have compassion you see that it's compassion that heals us if the compassion that works the miracle in our lives if thou canst do anything have compassion on us and help us he'll help you tonight he never rejects the request of anyone that is sincerely asking for help. 
help me i cannot help myself save me i cannot save myself heal me i cannot heal myself deliver me i cannot deliver myself break every yoke in my life i cannot break all those yokes by myself therefore lord here am i the sin wants to destroy me the sin wants to pull me into the destruction everlasting everlasting it says if thou canst do anything have compassion on us and help us it will help us me in particular me in particular whatever the problem you in particular that hell healing hell saving hell redemptive hell it turning around hell transform transforming hell it will come to you tonight in jesus look at verse 23 in verse 23 jesus said unto him if thou canst believe that's all if thou canst believe you believe in christ tonight how do i sure i believe in christ i hate what he hates i love what he loves i come to him i stay with him i don't go back to satan i don't go back to sin i don't go back to evil if you say you come to christ you believe in christ and you go back to satan to his enemy you didn't really believe that's no belief if you say you believe in the savior and you go back to your normal common habitual regular sin no that's no belief you say you believe in the savior you quit what he hates you give up what he hates and you come to him and you abide in him if he continue in my word that's faith then are ye my disciples indeed i believe if you truly believe you hate what he hates your love what he loves you abide with him after you have come to him if thou canst believe all things are possible to him that believe it tonight is your night night of salvation night of healing night of deliverance it will happen by his compassion tonight in jesus name amen repentance reliance reassurance you repent you turn away from everything contrary to the righteous life repentance with restitution reliance totally relying on the lord and then reassurance that whosoever shall call on the name of the lord shall be saved shall be healed shall be delivered shall be set free your hour has come my time has come say that my time has come the time of salvation has come for you the time of repentance the time of conversion has come and whosoever will repent and be converted his sins will be blotted out and your name will be reaching in the book of life it's about and eyes closed it's bowed and eyes closed the favor of heaven is coming unto you the forgiveness of heaven is coming unto you the salvation of the lord that change of heart and that transformation of life is coming unto you right now as you repent as you make the promise to the lord 
the shed my shed that you stole is clothes that you stole and other things that you stole you realize that if you truly repent you must return them and you say i can't do it now but i will do it that's what zacchaeus said zacchaeus said i will do it and the lord said this day is salvation come unto you you believe in the lord and you are repenting you are saying truly truly today i offer myself to the lord in prayer and i repent wherever you are raise up that hand and say lord here i am here i am here I am. I believe in the Lord. I make him my Lord now. Sin will not be my Lord anymore. Sin partner will not be my Lord anymore. The concubine will not be my Lord anymore. And no sinful partner will be my Lord anymore. I offer myself to the Lord. What are you that shows your sincerity? Raise up your hand and say, Lord, I'm here. I make you the Lord of my life. I turn away from my sin. And I believe that you are my Savior and Lord from today. Raise up that hand. Raise up that hand. If you are raising up your hand, you'll stand up. You're standing up for Jesus. you say, yes, I turn away from my sin. Yes, I turn away from all the evil in my life, in my heart. Yes, I give myself to the Lord fully, completely, without a rival and without any reservation. Raise up your hand and stand up right there. You can see your sincerity. You can see your, uh, you know, your commitment unto Him that you turn away from your sin and you are turning to the Lord today and that salvation will come to you right now stand up right there stand up right there as we're standing up if you're online do the same thing make up your mind I repent make up your mind I turn away from my sin make up your mind all those evil things will not be the Lord of my life anymore and you raise up the hand and you stand up you are watching over the television do the same thing a change a transformation conversion is coming upon you now raise up that hand raise up that hand and stand up online anywhere you are this is a more Moment of decision turning away from everything that is evil and turning to the Lord to abide and to stay with the Lord for the rest of your life the Lord is going to answer now and give you salvation I didn't hear your amen there now. and as we pray that joy of salvation will come to you the peace and salvation will come to you and the grace of God that appears unto all men to bring that salvation will appear to you right there keep that hand up I'm praying for you now father in the mighty name of Jesus we thank you for your love we thank you for your compassion we thank you Lord for what you want to do in every life that turns unto you confessing and forsaking their sin lord i pray that your forgiveness will come unto them as they have faith in you and rely on you wholeheartedly tonight in jesus name the salvation of the lord come to you right now the forgiveness of the lord come to you right now and the power to go and sin no more Come into every one of you now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Say thank you, Lord, with me. Say it aloud. Thank you, Lord. We know you have done it. You cannot deny those who repent and believe on Christ. We know you have saved them. Confirm it, Lord, in their hearts with a witness and with a good life that follows in jesus name we pray 
God bless you. Keep on standing. Keep on standing. We're going to have a session of uh, counseling now. Our counselors are there with you. And you will, you know, get some details from uh, you. We call on a moderating overseer tonight to help us during this time. And then after that, your healing, your miracle, with your name attached unto it, will not miss you in Jesus' name. God bless you. If you are clapping, clap unto Jesus. Those of us that stood up for giving our life to Jesus Christ, we have taken a very wise decision. We welcome you into the kingdom of God. The counselors are all around you. Kindly give your correct name, your correct address, your correct phone number, so that hereafter, we can reach you and continue to help you to stand in the decision you have taken. Counselors, let's please go all over to the language section. Some people are outside the camp, outside the fence. Some people are far down there be, uh, under the trees. Kindly of let's reach unto every one of them. Give your correct name, your correct address, your correct phone number. It is so that hereafter you can be reached to help you to stand in the wise decision you have taken. If you have taken this decision and the counselors have not reached you, you can beckon unto them. They are all around you. The counselors are all around. Give the correct name your correct address, your correct phone number. All the details that will help us to reach you hereafter, kindly give it to the counselors. You have taken a very important decision. And God will help you to stand in that decision you have taken. Tomorrow, by 3 p.m., all of us that have taken this decision this evening, you have surrendered your life to Jesus Christ, you have repented of your sin, and those of us that took similar decision yesterday, on Friday, and on Thursday. We'll be having a special section for all of us. That section is tied to lunch hour with Jesus. It's by 3 p.m. in the hall towards your right hand side, right here, in this compound, it is very important for you to attend that section. If you are online, you have taken this decision, just check under your screen. There is a link going on on your screen. Click on that link, complete the pro format on the link, and send it back. It is so that we'll be able to reach you hereafter to help you in the wise decision you have taken. If you are listening on the radio, on the television, and you have taken this decision, 
please send your address, your name, your phone number to this number plus two three four nine one five four 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 nine two six three if you have taken this decision on radio or you are listening on radio or you are listening on television I have taken this decision this evening please send your name your address your phone number to this number plus two three four nine one five four 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 nine two six three you can send a whatsapp message you can also send on telegram you can send a text message it will reach us counselors please let's um, get to all those that have taken decision and take their contacts Shortly after now, our Father in the Lord will be coming to pray for miracle, and you will have your own tonight. It's a night of complete cure. Your sicknesses will be cured. Amen. You will go back home with joy. Amen. After the message, you wait to share your testimony and to also listen to other people's testimony. Don't go away. You wait behind to participate in the testimony section. To give your own testimony and to listen to others. Counselors, please, let's increase our attention. And if you have completed your own section of the counseling, kindly signify so that we will know. If you have taken this decision and you are online, please check your screen. There's a link going on on your screen. Click on that link. Complete the pro format and send it back. If you have listened to this message and you have taken the issue and you are on radio or you are on television, please send your name, your address, your contact number to this phone line. Plus 234-915-4444 nine two six three tomorrow by 3 p.m all of us that took decision for christ on thursday friday saturday today sunday we'll be meeting for a special section lunch hour with jesus by 3 p.m it's going to be in a hall by your right hand side right here in this compound and on september 3 on september 3 there'll be banquet for all the converts those on online those of all that took decision and we listening to this message on radio there will be banquet for all of us by 3 p.m. For those of us in Oshogbo here, it will be holding at our headquarters church power line. Ministers conference tomorrow by 7. And in all the region headquarters, it will be holding. Remember tomorrow morning, it will be ministers, church workers, and professional conference by 7 a.m. Ministers, church workers, and professional conference by 7 a.m. It will be holding in Wogdiv, 
Center. 7 a.m. You cannot afford to miss it. It's for church workers, ministers, and professionals. Tonight is going to be your own night. So you are sitting there, telling God, God, give me complete cure. Complete cure. Complete cure. From spiritual sicknesses, from physical sicknesses, from matrimonial sicknesses, financial sicknesses, mental sicknesses, heart sicknesses, kidney sicknesses, bone sicknesses, tissue sicknesses. Lord, give me complete cure. Complete cure. The compassionate Jesus is here in our midst tonight. He will grant you complete cure. He will grant you complete cure. You will not miss your blessing. Praise the Lord. Everybody, you can stand up. My time has come. My miracle is here. Deliverance here. Healing here. <laughs> Look at the way you are saying it. The Lord will have compassion upon you. And that compassion will roll away every challenge and every problem you have right there tonight in Jesus' name. You raise up your hand and you lay the other hand where you have the challenge. And you know that Christ is the compassionate Christ and it brings complete kill. And that complete kill will come to you right now. You will not miss it. The Lord will put a testimony in your mouth right there today. You must check up because it will happen. After the final amen, the place you are putting your hand now, you remove your hand, lo and behold, the healing is there already. And what you could not do before, you couldn't walk before, you stand up, you walk. You couldn't see before, you open your eyes, lo and behold, look at the people, you will see clearly. The noise that had been in your brain, in your mind, in your head. The moment we say the final amen, that demonic noise will vanish away. <laughs> Healing, deliverance, miracle coming now. Raise up that hand and lay the other hand where you have the challenge. Father, in Jesus' name, we know that Jesus, your only begotten Son, is our compassionate Christ healing us. We're asking, Lord, that right now your healing comes upon everyone in Jesus' name. From the head to the toe, any part, every part of the body, we pray, Lord, that your power will penetrate everywhere right now. Brain problem, insanity, I command you, come out in Jesus' name. And I pray for those who have any swelling, hunchback, goiter, fibroid, elephantiasis, whatever, are near, here is the moment of your healing. The moment of your deliverance. Be healed in Jesus' name. That swelling come out in Jesus' name. Those blind eyes, Christ is still the same today. Is opening blind eyes. This is your time. Your blind eyes will open. 
your dim sight will clear up. Father, confirm it upon every blind man, blind woman, blind child. Give them perfect sight in Jesus' name. Those who are deaf and dumb, dumbness cannot withstand the name of our compassionate Christ. And deafness cannot withstand the name of the compassionate Christ. Deafness, dumbness, I command you, come out in Jesus' name. Begin to hear very well. Begin to speak out clearly. Those who are born like that, I pray this miracle will come to you right now. That the Lord will reverse every negative thing from your birth in Jesus' name. Every form of pain in your body, in the bone, inside you, in your joints. Lord, I pray, pain right hand side there pain in the front there pain on that side there pain for that person online i command you come out in jesus name be healed in jesus name cancer it's your final moment in that place Whatever the stage, stage one, stage two, stage three, or stage four, doesn't matter. Cancer, be healed in Jesus' name. Also, you have to clear away from there. And I command that also be healed in Jesus' name. That pile you're healed in jesus name now lord everywhere for everyone whatever the ailment this is a healing moment for everyone deliverance moment for everyone lord manifest your power demonstrate your power Lord, I pray, stretch forth your powerful hand upon everyone tonight in Jesus' name. It is done. It is manifested. It is demonstrated right now. Lord, show yourself strong on everyone there. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Say it aloud. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. That final amen has finalized it. Check up yourself. Check up yourself. Your healing is there. Your miracle is there. Your deliverance is there already.